dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. A drop of dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. A drop of dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. Cause it's the end game time. Oh, we'll roll the old dice and sing a song. We'll roll the old dice and sing a song. We'll roll the old dice and sing a song. Cause it's the end game time. Oh, a bottle of rum won't do us any harm. A bottle of rum won't do us any harm. A bottle of rum won't do us any harm. Cause it's the end game time. in the sea and dead men in the sand old salt marsh sleeps while its enemies plan best batten down your hatches there's a storm near at hand oh, we should have stayed on land oh we'll roll the old guys and sing a song we'll roll the old guys and sing a song we'll roll the old guys and sing a song cause it's the end and welcome back Last time on Missed Opportunities, Ghosts of Saltmarsh, the crew of Pixie's Fury committed burglary. At the behest of the wizard Keledek, they broke into Gelen Primewater's mansion to steal a paperweight from his desk, which he suspected to be magically linked to some type of um, ancient being with telepathic psychic powers somewhere far beneath the ocean he thought it be is also linked to a group called the thalassic league and had something to do with the pledge that either prime water or someone else in salt marsh's history made with this group to uncover that he asked the group bring it to him and they did and with, you know, only a, a few minor hiccups along the way, one of which resulted in maybe a good portion of Prime Water's um, actual study burning down. So uh, they escaped unnoticed and left a, uh, left a house fire in their wake, um, <laughs> covering their tracks quite well. Uh, and that was uh, mostly the uh, rogue cleric Inaris doing that. So... Um, but she never liked that guy much anyway, so. Nope. Um, and then, indeed, they brought this recovered item back to Keledek, and he reminded them that the next thing he would need to investigate the connections between Saltmarsh and the Thalassic League would be the corpse of one of these strange priest-like figures, one of which they had encountered on a ship not long ago. A man with um, almost looking undead and warped by the sea with a large octopus just stuck to his head. He said he would need one of these alive in order to complete his investigation. So that is the last... Whoa, whoa, um, whoa, whoa, whoa. He said alive? Were... No, no, no. He okay. didn't say alive. He, said, he, he just said bring, bring him one that's not completely destroyed or decayed with okay, the brain good. and brain matter mostly intact. Good, the the little detail there that we might have sorry, missed. Sorry, sorry. I was like, what? Hmm? Yes, no, it not alive, not alive. Um, we good at killing things. If you're really in, ambitious, just not like burnt anyway. for crisp. So that is where you are, and then at the very end of the night, Prion also had an encounter with Sholek, who sort of snuck into the bunk above him, um, asking him, "Bunk sneaker." What, uh, and he asked Prion if what he was doing matched Prion's morality, if he wanted him to continue. And not giving him really approval or disapproval, Prion mentioned that yes, he would like to root out the corruption in Salt Marsh. And Sholak took that as a cue to continue. And so he said that eventually he would show them the next clue to the great the greater secret that he had uncovered during his time beneath the shack in Crabber's Cove. And the evening came and you all were able to get your rest before waking to a quiet salt marsh morning. So 
The night, obscured by mist, has now passed, and the morning blooms beautifully across the bay, the fog beginning to burn away, little wisps of it dancing up from the harbor as the red sun rises over Salt Marsh. And it is morning, and you can do as you all wish. Hmm. I think I've got some things to buy in town. But should maybe we wait a bit and make sure things are calmed down from last night? I was, uh... I was visited by that vampire again. What? <gasps> On the Jolek? ship? Jolek? Yes, Jolek. He's here. Aye. In the bunk above me. Oh. Only Are you briefly. Sure you weren't dreaming? Um, no. Nether goes and rings the bell for all hands on deck. He's long gone. He's long gone. Oh. Hmm. You still do it, Nether? Yeah. No, I want to make sure that he didn't kill any of our crew. <laughs> yeah. King, 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 king. The ship's bell rings out, and soon enough, the uh, full crew is summoned up on deck. Um, you can see, uh, um, for whatever reason, the uh, waves of the evening have left Melvin quite incapacitated um, in his corners. He is not feeling well. And um, you hear the door to the captain's quarters creak open slightly and two empty glass bottles clink to the ground and sort of roll out. Um, you Aww. see the red hair and uh, loose braid of Mariah kind of poke their way halfway out. Is anyone dead? Well, that's what we're going to find out. Well, let me know. Otherwise, leave me the fuck alone. <laughs> and she <laughs> closes the door. Perfect. I, I, Captain. Make me Captain. And all the you crew want to be Captain gets up and are standing really at attention, looking towards all of you, um, especially you, Nether, who has just rung the bell. They're all standing. Some of them ropes in hand. Others have hands on weapons. Um, some looking around, already starting to generate some rumors, pointing towards the burning house behind them and everything. There have been problems in town but that's not why you're here right now we had a visitor last night someone got on board they're particularly good at it i don't think there's going to be anything we can do to stop them if they choose to come back again but they might not have our best interest at heart so make sure you keep an eye on each other stay safe so far this individual hasn't made himself a particular threat but he could change his mind uh they all kind of look about towards that and look around to each other a little bit confused and uh one looks up and says anything in particular we should watch for maybe someone you don't recognize someone mm -hmm. particularly good looking perhaps too good looking to be in salt marsh if you take my meaning maybe oh, yeah. more more like you'd see at a lord's table in water deep something like that no chance of seeing that here one of them says and then he kind of looks up towards talise and saray and and uh in Aris gets oh i didn't mean i well, Shut up. And he kind of gets it fist in the gut from one of the sailors next to him and uh, sorry i it's just it's okay i don't find you attractive either uh, dm <laughs> you know, he was disguised as someone else originally. i'm glad was we got that crew? cleared up <laughs> do we want to tell him about the vampire or no huh? heard a lot of things at once right there sorry I... <laughs> was, do we want to uh... tell them about was he if he was obviously disguised as someone else wasn't he so was he disguised as someone of our crew currently you from what you saw you you didn't you didn't see anything besides pretty much his eyes and some of his face as he leaned over the uh the berth or the hammock that he had kind of slung there um he 
And then when he left, he seemed to just kind of dissipate into a cloud of mist. Whether or not that's how he you could probably surmise that may be how he got there as well. So it's possible that no one actually saw him come aboard. Okay. Uh, like I said, I'm more I'm more worried that he's going to try to eat one of our crew. So just sort of, I don't expect to be able to stop him. But if, if anybody is acting strangely, saying or doing things that you wouldn't expect them to do, Should we double the watches? I'll just make It'll... sure no, just make sure that nobody's standing by themselves. All right. Well, double watches it is. It'll be well, That'll be four up, four down for all you lads. You understand that? No more eight hour sleeps. You hear that? First mate says there's danger aboard, but it won't be aboard the Fury. Right, lads? And someone said, yeah, yeah. All right. We, we still have the dragon, right? I haven't heard him lately. Um, yeah, uh, one <laughs> of the a <laughs> took me a minute. <laughs> In fact, that was uh, that was Dargan who was uh, uh -huh. making that making Dargan. that comment. Um, Dargan the dragon. He's kind of taken a maybe a um, second mate type of position among the crew he's doing know, all right so. on the ship so long as it's in dock i can't wait to see what he's gonna be like <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah he's doing all right <laughs> yeah, this is easy <laughs> being a sailor is a piece of cake hey dorgan i she's gonna reach in her belt and take out one of her daggers here take one of these guess you need an extra and tosses it to him I have plenty of toothpicks, miss. <laughs> but he uh, he laughs, but sticks it in his belt anyway. All right. So, what's next? Uh, um, Heather, did you need to go into town? I did. I would kind of. Debris. Uh, De Debris. Uh, One of these days, we'll get it right. 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 Um, I'm not sure what, after a, a, a caper, is it best to be seen in town or should we wait for the authorities to come and ask questions? So well, we can all say, no, we were right here. Did anybody see you? No. Then you're fine. I'm not That's going cool. to be going around doing stuff because... I got quite a bit of attention last night, so I'll be staying close to the ship. But if nobody saw you, just go about your business. Otherwise, it'll look suspicious. That's true. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. I'll come with you. Ray and not wanting to be left alone with Anaris and Talise because she's afraid of them is going to also go into time. I was like, and the two of us just stand there like, yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. <laughs> that's Bullies. not necessary. I'm already scared. <laughs> We're not doing anything. We're just being silly. Bullies and in the afraid. not in the nautical good term, the bad way. Bully. Oh. <laughs> Bully in the alley, no, an, 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 bully, act, bully. An, actual, an actual bully. I don't yeah. know why she's afraid alley. of us. We've Not... never done anything to her yet. <laughs> yet, yeah. I've been super mean to me when I try to talk to you. It's not important. I'm sorry. Let's Are go. we talking to you right now? Yeah, just go. Is this is this an A and B conversation? This was an A B conversation. Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> so anyway, we've never done anything to her. Girls mm -hmm. are weird. <laughs> it's just like being back at school with there's like the, the mean fish and then the nice ones and... <laughs> did she just call us mean fish she called you a fish you look more I like a of... fish than i do yeah so it's fine. you have a statement of fact the hair thanks it's beautiful it's one of my ears creepily fall off <laughs> <laughs> it's the best i knew really that was the human half <laughs> One of them says, <laughs> "It's the other ear that's the draw ear." Um, right. 
Uh, how much time has passed since we um, since we uh, spoke with uh, Captain Z, which is actually Captain X? Yeah, um, you probably have a couple more days once That's you. What I thought. Okay. Yeah. All right. Before she's going to be back. So. Well, I literally only have the one thing to get. So unless there's something else to be done. And do you guys remember what sort of the next threads, clues were that Keladek gave you? Well, we should, oh, so I have to do to... with what's the family name? To investigate the Chandlers. The Chandler. Chandlers. That's Chandler it. Bings. The Bings. Yeah, the Chandler Bongs, yeah. <laughs> yes. That is the direction that he pointed you in, at least, um, saying that, well, yeah, to look there. So, all right. As we're walking for me to pick up my gilded lily, um, hmm. I do uh, sort of casually mention walking along, you realize we've only known each other for a few days? Hi. So a lot has happened. A lot has changed. How long has it actually been? It's been over. I thought it's been over a week, hasn't it? We've had a week yeah, down. But I mean, yeah, probably two weeks. Actually, to, you know, counting in the whole haunted house, the journey through the marshes, which took a couple days. Your your voyage out to the emperor of the waves which took a few days so maybe more like two ten days hmm. well do you have any questions oh, i've got a pretty simple life all things considered we're kind of reaching the point where maybe if each other's lives are in our hands we should have fewer secrets hey i i don't really have any secrets I mean, well, that's good, but that's exactly what a liar would say. That is very true. Uh, Serene? Hmm? Oh, Tell us your secrets. Sorry, I, I didn't, I didn't <laughs> mean to distract you. I was just saying that we don't really know each other all that well, and if there is any questions you had, perhaps it'd be best to have, I don't know, have it out. Uh, it's, <sighs> am I annoying? Just like, be honest. I generally find most people annoying. Okay. So yes. Prion. <laughs> I don't think he was, I don't think she was saying yes. I was, I was about to say I'm finding you less annoying every day. Although I do have some questions at some point that I really need answered. Okay. It hasn't, I, I only ask because it hasn't always been the easiest for me to socialize. And sometimes I find it difficult to read a situation correctly. And I feel like I have made, a, made more enemies than I have friends. And I just feel like it's my fault and I've messed everything up. I wouldn't say enemies. Enemies is a, is a strong, that's a bit too much. You, you've I don't got to remember. feel like we're enemies. No, of course not. But yeah, you're from the sea. You've never been around common people, village people like here. So you just got to get used to it. Like that construction worker there and that police officer over Thank there. You. there. Thank you. <laughs> the village people are just so bizarre. Strange. That folks. guy doesn't have a shirt. He never wears a shirt. And he's got a weird mustache. Oh, oh okay. So, for a long part of my life, I've been, well, I've had no friends. And I understand. Every time I tried life. to do something and tried to you know, fit in or make friends. It never went well. It was always, it was always a joke. Yeah. So 
I learn to just be myself. Okay. Tell people what they want to hear. Is that the same as being yourself? Telling people what they want to hear? Well, it helped me avoid problems. What do you think Talise and Anaris want to hear? Nothing? Not, should I just say nothing? I expect that it will be a long time before we know everything about Anaris and Therese. Talise, I think. Talisa, yeah. I think, um, I think they're going to hold on to their secrets for a long time. Okay, so they just really I, scare me. I don't think they dislike you. I think they're what? just teasing. <laughs> they're just teasing. Uh -huh. And if it's any worth, I don't dislike you either. I just got a little bit upset about trusting a creature too. Far too easy. Yeah. I just thought it might be nice to have a friend. That mm. was a little bit too much. But is that who you truly were at that moment? Are you the type of person that gives friendship and trust away that easily? Really? I mean, not until I got here and started feeling feeling pretty pretty isolated and so I guess that it's similar to what you were saying about you know telling people what they want to hear and I, I had felt like I'd already kind of made a fool of myself with most of the group and so when this new opportunity arose to to be helpful and to maybe make a friend I thought okay yeah I'm going to go in and hopefully make a friend and yeah, it seemed a little weird, but also I've just, I wanted to believe the best and I just feel like everything that I thought is wrong. And I'm I just learning I, that everything that I thought is wrong. I think I just now realized how incredibly lonely you must feel. Yeah. I mean, I don't want you to like feel bad for me or like pity me. I don't want pity friendships because I've heard those are a thing. Um, so you don't have to be yeah that's what someone told me once that they were uh, a horrible my idea friend. yeah so i don't want that i but i i i want to know if i can be better or different or something to make it easier i'd say be yourself and don't try too hard to be something else i don't know how to be any other way so i guess that's kind of easy at any rate, in our centuries, well, they've got each other, and let's let leave it at that. Okay. Will you be my friend? Possibly. Okay, that's fair. I don't think you've got Riyadh? enough gold. I do. I could pay you to be my friend. I don't want money. That was just a joke. Oh. <laughs> okay. Sure. I'm happy, happily be your friend. There you go. Oh, wow. Cool. I'm going to have to journal about this. You know who I do think is my friend? Melvin. I'm sad oh. that he's not feeling well. He's kind of like the only one who I feel like gets me. I can understand... I wouldn't say get you, but I understand you. And again, I just... I just think we're all young. Well, most of us. I think Mariah may be a bit Mariah's older than us. Mariah's pretty old. Right? I'd say she's... I'm older than Mariah. Well, in oh. human years. In human years, maybe not. But. <laughs> I obviously don't mean that Mariah's age is actually old. <laughs> sure. I don't! <laughs> Once upon a time, I was the youngest. <laughs> is there more to that story? Or that... that was a joke as well. Oh, you were never the, I'm confused. Oh my God, that's right. Cause you were the youngest and now you're the old. I'm sorry. I'm, you're. Incredible. 
You'll notice too, Nether, as you're walking through Salt Marsh, people that you would sometimes recognize in the past that might have that might know you, some give you a second look, but you almost feel like a stranger again in this place. Some people with the amount of change that you've gone through in growing up this quickly, some people really don't recognize you. Who would I'm not have blind, in the past. which well, I don't appear to be blind, which is yeah. probably helpful. Hmm. All right. Well, I need to buy a flower. Maybe we should get you some armor as well, Sir Anne. Some better armor? Do you, think, do you think that mine's not good enough? Uh, it, it, it looks really pretty, but... There's a, Thank you. There's a, a few areas where it's not covered. Oh. Do you think someone could make armor that matches mine? Here? I doubt it. Or at least complements it? Money's Mate. no object. You keep saying that. It's true. Why is it no object? Are I, you some sea, I, sea princess or something? Yes, stop. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> well, oh. I mean, how does that work? Is there, is it, do you just have a lot of gold? Yeah. With we just you. have coffers full of all sorts of currency. Where? Under the sea. So you don't actually have it with you? No, I have some. Well, I have more than enough physically with me. Where is it? My my family said to never tell people where I keep my money. Well, that's smart, but I suppose that... It's not that important, but it's just, I mean, if I had a fortune, but it was halfway across the world, I feel like it wouldn't be doing me any good. And I wonder if that's not the case here. If, if you have a fortune, but it's underneath the ocean. Well, enough of it's on land. Ah, okay then. Yeah. I mean, not all of my money is here. <laughs> that would be ridiculous. No, it's uh, it's most of it's under the ocean. Yeah, no, that's I understand what you're saying. Yeah. So yeah, if you think that we can find a place where I can get some some new uh, new complimentary armor, I'd be very interested in that. Are you uh, good at shopping for armor? Uh, I had the guy do mine. Maybe he's got something for yours. Maybe, you know, maybe a dingle hopper or something. Oh, I I love dingle hoppers. What's a dingle hopper? I've got no idea. It was just a word I just made up. Oh, that that actually means something where I'm from. <laughs> Should we go get armor? Did you get your flower? Uh, did I get my flower? You, you can, yes. You can pick All up right. your flower for the requisite uh, spell component cost. Um, did you that will... charge me? You charged me some of it already, right? Or did you? I can't I think honestly you did can't half recall. An did half, half an advance? In advance okay. I believe. Yeah. So that's a hundred, another 150 gold gone. And now I can cast Summon Fae. Nice. And Prion and Serean. Well, and uh, Nether, as you continue, you will, the smiths at the Dwarven Anvil will tell you that um, they don't have any just, you know, off the rack. Are you looking for full plate? Is that what you're looking for, um, for Sarayan? I, what, what What is she wearing currently? Chainmail. I'll what have to type check. of armor is Saran wearing? Yeah. Uh, Saran looks down and makes an assessment of what she's currently wearing. Make an, ass make an assessment. <laughs> makes an assessment. And she what finds out that she is wearing chainmail. I mean... Okay, so heavy armor. Yes, looking for heavy armor. Gotcha. Uh, 
excuse me. I don't even, I'm, I'm, I don't even know they, how much it is. if oh, you can afford, yeah, fifteen hundred. Fifteen hundred gold. Yeah, come on, money bags. Do you take traveler's checks? <laughs> and here it is. <laughs> this is <funny. laughs> she said she's got a lot of money, so maybe like some of, of this. Money. This is expensive stuff. It, it would protect you. It has to be fifteen hundred. What's what's the issue, Saran? Usually, my armor is free. Ah. Uh, uh... That checks out. I have 982 gold. Oh. Can't it be 700? Can I do 700 now and then come back with the other 800? Do you take IOUs? They kind of look at you funny and say, well, you see, the thing about armor is Usually when people don't pay it back, it's because... They're dead. Yeah. Oh, no, I don't plan on dying. So, um, should we set up a, uh, an agreement? Oh, that's very optimistic of you. Unfortunately, until you've paid in full, I can't let you walk away with it. You said you had 900. I have 982. I'll pay the rest. What? Freon, that's incredibly generous. If it keeps her alive. That's what true. What about you, money bags? Did I do it right? Did I use it right? It's a loan. How about that? Okay, yeah, absolutely. I can totally pay you back. That won't be a problem. Thank you so much. And Sarayan starts pulling out the gold and pushing it across the counter. Right. Um, that is 700. We'll to, Boop. We'll have to take your measurements and adjust it and fit it and such. Okay. Okay, then. Uh, <laughs> and they take out a... Uh, Serene, uh, you said you had 900, right? Not 700. Yeah, but I thought we were going to do half and then... Did I, <laughs> how do I live on 82 gold? Quite easily. I don't think that's true. I'd be destitute. Oh, don't knock it till you've tried it. You, you Are you sure you won't accept 700 now? Quite sure. Uh, Saran <laughs> begrudgingly pushes the other 200 in gold across. Okay, the 900 from Saran, 600 oh, from Prion. I'll pay 600. They will quickly um, starve. A uh, young Very dwarven likely. man and then a um, older dwarven woman will begin measuring Saran, your arms, um, you know, all of the fitting areas for the armor and will tell you to come back in about a day and they will have it properly adjusted, strapped, and fitted. Great, so, thank you so what, much. What do you think you're going to spend 82 gold on, Saran? Like well, food? That, that would feed you for a year. We could put some special Triton motifs and such on there for another 80 gold. N no, I need this 80 gold for food. Okay, plain it is. <gasps> but aesthetics are so important. <laughs> That's what I've always said. What? Um... <sighs> Just pay okay. the man. I'm not going to let you starve, but are we? Oh. <laughs> yeah, they're just watching this with just absolute fascination. I had some a friends gold once. Piece, she's lived off of a, gold, a single gold piece could have sustained her for two months. I had some friends once and there was a, a lady in the party that had to get rid of all of her worth. What happened to her? You said you had friends once. Did they die? No, she was fine. She was never seen again. <gasps> she went on to make lots of money. You'll be fine. Doing terrible, terrible things in the streets. <laughs> what? She's going to have to learn about teasing. Okay. 
It's a thing that friends Never. do. Never! 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 What? Is giving the 80 gold something that this person wants to hear? Well, he's a salesman. So, yes. Okay, here's the 80 what, gold. What, what, no, Are I we have, friends? I, I have a suggestion. <laughs> you know, Serian is holding. Decorations that you apply to something that you wear might have more meaning if they actually reflect things you've done or things that you've encountered or maybe even things that you've taken. I mean... Taken? Well, souvenirs. Maybe it would be better to decorate your armor with things that you've encountered on your oh. quest that you're on here. Add into Nether Zing here. What about trading your own armor and taking the... The fancy bits off that armor and put it on your new armor. And then they is get that... to keep that old armor. Is that not a fair deal there? Yes, Mr. Salesman, is that not a fair deal? <laughs> it's still going to cost you for the work. $40. Gold. What is he? This must be a, must be a triton. Uh, 40 gold. Not not many, not many uh, armorers have have the opportunity to say that they've supplied armor for Triton royalty. Yeah, I'm a princess. Is that true? Yes. It's the only possible explanation for how naive she is. Do you agree? <laughs> Make a persuasion check, Nether. Mm. Ray and make a hurt feelings check. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I am going to use. I do recall at the beginning of last session, DM, you allowed us to all have inspiration yes. based on the yes. largesse of our viewers. I'm going to use my inspiration point to roll this with advantage. That was because of the Kraken hype train. Hype train. 16 hype on the train. die for a dirty 20. All right, tell you what, I'll do it. We'll transfer these these marks over. Oh, okay. Are you uh, leaving your? But are you leaving that chainmail here with us? Yes. Right. So leave me the scraps once we're done disassembling and taking the ornament and transferring it over, and we'll call that good. Forty dollar gold. He's already agreed. Oh, you don't okay, have to just pay wanted to make sure that that... Wait, wait, I don't have to pay him any more? Nothing more? You're Sorry, lucky I... you got these ones looking out for you. Uh, your... Your... Do you still say your highness? Your... What's your... You have got a title or something? Your highness will do just fine. Thank you. She extends a webbed hand. Oh, uh, and he... <laughs> The sort of meaty dwarven hand <laughs> reaches out and grabs yours, and it come yours comes away kind of covered in soot. And wow, thank you. Mm. I suppose that you usually have people who do this sort of thing for you. Yes, I usually have people who do mostly everything for me. You're gonna love it here. I haven't found that to be the case so far. I have no idea why. Keep trying. It gets better. Okay. It doesn't. I'm already feeling better because I feel as though I know prions, my friend, and you at least said maybe, Debris, so, you know, <laughs> can only go up from here. Hmm. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, to, tomorrow, Serene, you will have some plate armor decorated with your appropriate... Am I, uh, just, am, I, am I correct in assuming that she does not have armor until then? That's correct. You're fine. So, just in whatever clothes that Serene wears normally without when she's not armored is what you currently have. So, and that that is that. Do you have that? 
coming to you tomorrow. Um, it's fair to say if you'd like, and Eris and uh, Talise, if you'd like to catch up with the rest of the party soon, you may do so. Unless you have something else the two of you would like to be doing on the ship by yourselves. Or elsewhere in town. Yes? No? Nope. Nope. Just just buddying it up on the ship. Yep. Okay. Just a normal, then eventually normal you guys day. do Nothing run into each other in the main market of Salt Marsh and purchase is complete. The rest of the day is yours. Hey, guys. How was shopping? Oh, got a pretty flower and some new armor on the way, so not too bad. Yeah, and you got a flower? Not me, no. I mean, I see, I saw jades. Oh, Teresa. Nether works the flower into the the netting of her. Thank you. Uh, very elaborate and um, heavily woven leather netting. Looks very, very pretty, Debris. Mm. Debris. Thank you. Debris. Nice flower. I'm hoping that a couple of other things that are kind of lurking around, or at least I think are, will also like it. If they like it enough, maybe they'll come and help us if we get it to scrap. Oh, interesting. I like that. That's clever. So, hmm. Oh, she's come from the boat. Does I know it's Mariah and Melvin not joining us? Nope. Um, I'm guessing that they had way too much of that crab stuff. I mean, I was Melvin way had too like a sip of it. Yeah, we weren't going to leave the boat today, just in case. But uh, mm. it's more dangerous to stay on the boat at this point. <laughs> it's just better to be off the boat for a little bit. I wanted so, ale that's not crab wine. What so do we, we need to go check know? out this family? Oh, yes, what was about to say. What do we actually know about them? What do they do for a living? So, Nether and actually probably Prion too would know that their name begets their profession. They are chandlers That's or right. ship chandlers. They, all the they, things that are fitters. Yeah, all the things that are specific for a ship that you wouldn't need anywhere else. Yeah, but also like you can buy candles and parchment, and it's you know, it's kind of a, it's an easy. If you were to send your quartermaster with a list of outfit the ship with supplies they could get almost all of it there hmm that would be a legitimate reason to go but, i mean what do we what do we say you know oh by the way what's going on between you and prime water uh i imagine that they would not respond particularly well to that exactly so how's i don't want to get any trouble while princess over there has got no armor Okay, so I told you guys the princess thing kind of in confidence, and then I mentioned it to the guy at the store because it seemed like that was gonna give me um give me that the discount or something. So, but if we could just like amongst the crew, it's gonna just keep down and down. Sure, that's right. Okay. We've all got secrets we want to keep, right? She says as she looks around slowly. I don't. I don't. I don't think I have any secrets. If I do, I'd be sure to tell you. Oh, well, that would be nice. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I think we're good, right, Talise? Who knows? It's fine. It's fine. Do you yep. smell that, Debris? Saran? <sighs> you... Let's carry on. Life. No, it's, no. It's just, kind of smells like a burn-in house. Other than that, no. Oh. I don't know how that happened. Mm. Is it... That's is that what you were smelling, Prion? No, no, mm -hmm. no. It was no, no. a lot worse. No. Were you smelling? Yeah. Mariah said it once. <clears throat> Bullshit. That was it. Yes, I smell that. Oh, that such a or, such a bizarre or smell. Or is it simply having... yourself because you haven't bathed in weeks? Oh, oh. I bathed. I bathed this morning. He's in the water all smell. the time. Oh, maybe you're smelling the brine of the sea. 
Is that what you're smelling? Yes, Sorayan. That's exactly what he's smelling. The brine of the sea. No, no, no. I'm saying what you were smelling was good. Never mind. You're right. What you said is good. Hey, she gets better every day. I like you. <laughs> there you go, Sorayan. She likes you. I told you. Uh -huh. Go with it, Talise. Best friends forever. Right. So these are my ideas. Well, first of all, do I know happen to know who are the currently living members of the Chandler family? Yeah, the you Chen would, family. Um, basically, uh, the current the current ones who run the shop and sort of the the heads of family at the moment are um, Talon and Gria Chandler. Talon is sort of the main shopkeeper. Gria is his wife. Is his wife. Do they have any children? You once met, um, um, Kaylin, who was a little bit older than you. She was always nice, but very reserved and sort of a loner as well. Oh. So she was a little older than me, a little older than 14 year old me. Yeah. Uh, people coming into the stream are gonna be like, what? <laughs> right when you were your original age before you were transformed she was a, you know a few years older than you okay well we could try perhaps one or two of us speaking with their daughter she's a, a bit of a loner and perhaps I don't know. Maybe could give us a little bit of information about stuff that her parents may have told her not to. We could, we could try. Like Just who's good easier. at talking to loners? <laughs> I think any one of us. No. I'm great or... at talking to people. Or we oh. could just go into the shop and you know, look again. around. I mean, we do have a legitimate reason to be there. We're That's true. outfitting a ship. I'm just thinking that if she is a loner, if a group of us approaches her, that might be Well, that be would be the wrong approach. Whelming. Yeah. I actually agree with Sarayan. Cool. Like, let's, let's not mob a little kid. Probably a bad idea. Looking to steal from him. Um, so Little kids th don't those, seem to hate me as much the, as the the, the the third the third choice would be to break in when it's dark. <laughs> I mean, I, do we want the building to be standing after? So far, all we know is that they're related to people who might have done something bad in the past, but whether or not that they've done it now is well i guess my question really is if we go with option three how open are people to there being another fire because i probably can't give another street sermon no no not when there's a child involved either uh damn didn't well, he mention something about crips another burnt building in my city would not be met with Pleasure. Who's city? Just kidding. Um, <laughs> that's what Nether says. Uh, interesting. Uh, so, uh, Prion, yes. Um, Kaladek didn't want to mislead you, but he thought there were some clues among their dead. He said, seek he encouraged you to seek answers among the dead, in his own words. As much so, as I don't is like there, grave Robin. Is there a graveyard? There is, is there a graveyard, a yes. Um, north of town, sort of the uh, the road that leads north of town. On one side of it is the temple to Valkur, and sort of up the hill on the other side is the graveyard, which spans sort of a hilly spance up up on that part of town. And are there any other areas where dead might be kept? I mean, this does, Salt Marsh doesn't strike me as a town that has places that have family crypts. It's not that complicated. Yeah. No, it's okay. 
I mean, it's the graveyard. It's the town graveyard. That's kind of it. Oh. Got it. So, all right. Well, there might be clues with the Chandlers themselves, or there might be clues with their dead. That does sound like grave robbing, doesn't it? Well, if there's a crypt, maybe we can go inside and have a look. If I don't want to be digging up no graves. But maybe there might be something as a clue on the gravestone, maybe. I don't know. Worth looking at. I'd rather do that than go into someone's house and potentially burn it down when there's a child in there. We're not going to do that. First. <gasps> All right. Well, that's the easiest thing we could do. Go to the graveyard and look at the graves. Hi. Right. So at least we could get some them? names. We can get some names. Like, like three and bring your book and we can take notes because I'm not going to remember anything about the graveyards. Oh, I bring my, my book everywhere. So it's important to you? Only if that's cool. No, no, no. Neither said to be myself. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Well, let's go then. Okay. No trouble. All right. So heading north of town in the morning, um, you are passing many merchants, mostly coming in to town. You're pretty much the only ones leaving at this point in the morning. Um, the city becomes more sparse and you enter what seems to be a countryside and there's the familiar path down to the temple of Valkor perched among the rocks, the temple that sort of floods with every tide taking the offerings of the people back with it. But then higher up on the hill to your left is a graveyard fenced in with wrought iron fencing. Um, the headstones dot the countryside. There are a few buildings which look like perhaps mausoleums or some such but not many for the most part it is just a calm normal graveyard there is a um figure of a robed woman holding a staff a statue there in the center of it as well uh her face has been sort of chipped away whatever deity may have or person may have been represented at one point the um, either sabotage or the elements themselves have eaten her identity away and now she just stands a nameless robed figure watching over the quiet gravestones as you enter you see a large very broad shouldered man um hunched over a hole in the ground who is repeatedly putting a shovel down into a grave and digging what seems to be a fresh plot. Repeatedly throwing the dirt over his shoulder. And that is what you see. Not Can any big wolves around, are there? <laughs> Nothing like that. I'm feeling like I've been here before. <laughs> <laughs> should, should we go should we go talk to them? Yes. Okay. Sure. Imagine you don't have any grave diggers under the sea. Yeah. No, I've never seen this particular setup. They're a fascinating breed. You should go speak to him. A grave digger? That's a They're sort very... of breed? Of being, very, uh, a like, figure of speech. Oh. Uh, okay. A very particular type of person. A vital job, but they tend to be shunned by other people in town. I understand what that's like. Um, okay. <gasps> um, oh, sorry. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just, they tend to be very like, like salt of the earth, sometimes rough around the edges. So, don't take things personally if he gets mad at you. You're muted, but I still love you. 
But that doesn't make me feel confident about talking to him. No, I'm just, I'm just letting you know, like, don't take anything personally. I take it just personally. That's why I'm warning you. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Jan's her way over there. <laughs> yes, <I'm> there. <laughs> so. <laughs> Hello. As, oh, as you Hello. walk up, the uh, the man sets down his shovel. Um, he's about two feet deep, probably about knee knee deep in the grave that he's started to um uh dig here and uh, he sets his shovel aside and he turns around and as he turns around you can see that he is not completely human um there's a greenish tint to his skin he is he sort of throws down a cowl to reveal that he is completely bald with sort of a wiry coarse gray beard there are also tusks protruding from his lower jaw he has a very large almost muscular brow a weird place to be muscular but that is the orcish blood that um gives him that appearance and he turns around and looks regards you and um in aquin says the words gentle currents to you traveler which would be a very courteous way to greet someone in the uh culture that you are of the uh the of the triton culture so um, the first time you've heard anyone in salt marsh ad address you that way usually it's what news do you bring triton or you know or what omens do you bring triton but he greets you in a way that is familiar to you a way that you would be greeted at home. And to you. And Ryan kind of grab like grabs at where like a skirt would normally be to like do a, a little curtsy but finds nothing there. So her hands just gonna go like right <laughs> up from her body as she perfunctorily <laughs> and not elegantly curtsies. He kind of raises an eyebrow for a second and then says, oh, okay. Um, okay. How was my pronunciation? It was, it was very, very good. Oh, well, thank you. Yes. When did you learn Aquin? Oh, here and there, there's some, some books about your people and some of the early encounters of your kind that that I've helped old Eliander translate. At least I translated the draconic parts that were scribbled. Uh, Aquan's a strange language. No one around here speaks it, but... Well, well between what we know, we were able to parse together a few things, and I'm glad I did the pronunciation justice. Yeah, you're the first person I've, I've met who, who, speaks, who speaks it. Well, it's... Not exactly something you hear on the streets. I've noticed but, that. But my name is Crag. Who do I have the honor of speaking to? I am Sarayan Alaranoth. Sarayan Alaranoth. She extends a webby hand. And he kind of takes a rag, wipes off his hand a bit, and then reaches out and shakes yours. Um, uh, like, you know... In contrast to the the broad but um, overall smaller hand uh, of the blacksmith, this one completely, his fingers completely close around your hand as he shakes your hand. He is a bordering, almost seven feet tall, barrel-chested, broad-shouldered, a monstrous half-orc man. Wow, your hands are huge! <laughs> Oh, well, what can I do for you, what Miss Serene? Uh, my, my, some of them are my friends. My group of travelers and I, I'm, I'm still working on befriending all of them, and it doesn't feel honest to speak for them and say they're all my friends when only two have kind of given their go-ahead. Um, sorry, that's neither here nor there. Um, but this group of people and me, 
are trying to uh, to find a, a great. Well, I've got a few of them here. <laughs> I see that. There's a lot. That was a joke, right? <sighs> wow. You need ah. to, uh, you don't relax much, do you? No. Well. And you see, if you look closely enough, that a little shimmer of tears is kind of welling up at, like, Sarayan's waterline. She's, like, blinking excessively. No, 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 no. Well, let me help you with this at least. Who are you looking for? And he hops out of the grave, um, almost just uh, just jumping out of it without um, any. Use he was of his seven hands. feet tall in up. the grave. No, no, he's set, he's he's about seven <laughs> feet tall as he uh, um, hops out. He's just very large and oh starts. Oh my gosh, uh, you're so tall! Lumbering towards the rest of the group. Sarayan so walks along behind. <laughs> you guys, I've met a friend. I mean, I don't want to speak for you. I'm sorry. I've I'm met somebody. Craig. His name is Craig. Nice to meet you. Pleasure. Now, what are you looking for here exactly? We're trying to learn some history of the place. Ah. Well. well find some of the family plots that go back the furthest, you know, the founders. Like... Oh, well, sure. I've the uh, Solmore family. Well, they built this building. There were some of the originals. Um, I think it dates back a few hundred years. There's even some, well, some of the trees, in fact. And, you know, he gro he points over towards actually sort of a beautiful oak tree. Um, growing up in the middle Music of the cemetery. Music doesn't make me think it's that, very beautiful. That grows up and sort of the the branches twist around. They're not quite gnarled. They're just um, somewhere between, they're, they're sad and they're twisted, but not painfully twisted. Um, and he says, some think there were elves buried near that one there. It's got some sort of energy to it, so. That was maybe even before the humans settled here. I think there's a thousand years of dead on this hill at least. But anyway, that's the Solmore one there. We've got the Olins are buried back down the way near the hill. Um, we, um, the, the history is really fascinating. Do you uh, please continue? Hi. It is fascinating. Right, well, I see the break in the plot here. Um, well, this line he shows a line of stones that are laid out against the road. And in here, we're gonna have to find a different, well, sort of open to some families. It's a really nice spot, but, uh, well, as of recently, we're now burying the prime waters across the way they're actually going to be building a new marble mausoleum over there but most of old gellen's family the old ones are buried over here but uh well why are they changing we're not doing that anymore since his mother at his mother's behest fallen out you see them in the chandlers nasty business apparently but uh why did they fall out Oh, not quite sure. Old, uh... Closeness going back a couple of generations. Partners. Oh, well, they were of the same family, yeah. Intermarried long, long ago, but still the Chandler and Primewater family was... Well, they were like cousins. Um, but after, uh... Well, it usually has something to do with money. Eh, uh, who knows? But, well, Gellin's mother, when his father died, uh, well, she threw out his uncle and separated him from the family fortune, so I'm told. 
They're doing fine. The business does well. They've got some sort of chateau out on some island somewhere. They just call it the chateau. Um, but, uh, so, apparently they're doing fine. But, uh, do you, they have an island? Huh? That's where the all Chandler, the kids grow the up. The Chandler family has an island. Oh, uh, yeah. Huh. What do they call it? I mean, the chateau, but what does the island call? Surely they don't call the island the chateau. Well, that's what they usually call it. I don't, I have no idea. <laughs> they say they're going to the chateau or the, you know, once a child gives birth, they go out to the chateau, you know, and raise them there. It's nice, apparently warm, seasonable. Other parts of the family live out there and care for the young'uns and such before they move back to Salt Marsh to do the hard work. Did Kaelin do that? Uh, you know, I think of it, I don't know if she's been there. Usually they leave pretty early and come back when, when they've grown, when they're ready to work, but she's been a little scamp running around here, one of the only Chandler kids I've ever known, except for old, uh, and he points to um, another grave. Um, but I do remember old Ziha was the same way. Way back in the day. Supposedly never went... Never went to sea, but, you know. Tragic end for her. And he points to a grave that says Ziha Chandler. 1447 to 1465, lost at sea. Oh, if she was lost at sea, then why is there a grave? Oh, well, it's honorary. We still do that for many of them who Valkyr's taken beneath. What? So do you do you dig a grave? Mostly, we just put a headstone up. It's just ceremonial, so the family has a place to go. A lot of port cities do this. It's fairly common for Valkyr so, followers. This Zia, she she never went to sea, but this one time? Uh, yeah, I mean... I don't really know all of that. I don't know if she were a greenhorn or what, but... Uh, but she did never go to the chateau. I don't think so, No. That were some years ago. Memory might be fuzzy. Hmm. Yeah, they, well. Do they have their own... Are you interested in the, the, the in the Chandlers then? Or the Prime Waters? It seems to... Both. I think they're fascinating. I'd love interest. to learn both. It seems like those are the two that have the most history here. Hmm. Other than the elves, I suppose. Right, well... There's been plenty of prime waters lost at sea, but the five Chandlers lost at sea are right in this row here. Earliest were... Oh, let's take a look here. I think earliest were the old... Were old Brendan. And then, let's see. What else do we have? Ah, we had Fleta, yes. Then it were Yuri and... Before Ziha, I think it were Herman. Aye. The Chandler's lost at sea, at least of the stones I can read. Hmm. And the Prime Waters? You said there are many? Oh, aye, yeah. But, uh, many sort of shows... There are a handful with a lot of, you know, lost at sea and whatnot. Um, some match up with these dates, uh, especially the dates of death. Um, in particular, the death date of um, 1465 seems to be very common. You see a few other prime waters, um, actually 13 of them have that same uh, date. 
Bizarrely, they all died at the age of 18. What's that? So bizarrely, they all died at the age of 18. Did they now? Well, I guess you're right. In the same year? No. No. Well, the years are different. You said something, there was a lot of 18... 18... Oh, well, there must have been a ship go down and in uh fort back there in 65 but but all of the the chandlers died when they were 18. Aye. oh oh so they did i'm almost 18 is it dangerous to be 18 here only if you're a chandler <laughs> dm remind me what was the priest doing on the boat when we came in performing a ritual right did that, that ritual involve somebody dying no there wasn't anyone there but it seemed to be directing a curse to salt marsh and it referenced a debt that salt marsh had not paid uh. hmm. I know. anyone's also <laughs> welcome to make a um a investigation or intel general intelligence check if you'd like and look at brendan brendan's surname's different <laughs> you ass. I was like, Wait. <laughs> well, we do an intelligence check. Uh, yeah. I we'll should not do that. Oh, I should not. I'm, I'm going to roll it anyway, but I've got a minus one. I've, I have a pretty good intelligence. <laughs> I rolled a did, did you get a 20? I rolled a Kraken. Oh there it is. I was like, I don't need to roll it. There's no do point. To, Minus one. Do you have to subtract Prion? <laughs> yeah, 19. <laughs> I rolled eight and 11. Gotcha. I've already got so many Prion. Krakens. Yes. Prion, if you look at these dates, the death dates are all exactly 25 years apart. Okay. Exactly 25 years apart, and each of them is 18 years old. And where does that put us in the timeline, like, from the most recent one, Zia? Um, it is 27 years. Ah, I see. Who is the girl that we saved on the boat? from drowning she related oh. to that councilwoman she was in Oland oh, yeah oh, okay did they have any relationship to the Chandlers um not really just business relationships nothing near the way the families of the Prime Waters and the Chandlers were connected no okay thank you Hmm. That so is strange. To be paid. Two years and no debt. What's this debt you're talking about? It's all mystery. Mysteries. We, we like solving mysteries, you see. Which is why we're so much, so interested in, in the history of the place. Well, there's like to be mysteries aplenty here. Is there something else I can help you with? I uh, do have to get this one dug by the end of the day. No, you carry on. But where can we look for the prime waters again? Ah. Well, some of them are right here. The older generations. But the most recent that have died are down the way. Only a couple graves right now. There haven't been many died recently. It was only about 20, 30 years or so ago that, that uh, the late... Mrs. Prime Water threw out uh, old Talon, or uh, Davag Chandler, uh, through that fight. So it's a recent schism. So the new ones are down there, the rest of them, and he points out some other uh, Prime Water graves, just in a little area nearby. The markings, the chiseling is similar, so you'd be able to find most of them until you reach a point so far in the past that the um, writing is not legible. 
So we wait till it goes. And... Wait, okay. wait, 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 Crag, Crag. Yes, Miss Sorayan. <clears throat> and then Sorayan says in Aquin, may happy Kurds guide you home. Ah, oh, so that's how you say it. And he repeats it quite well. And then very, turns to the rest of nice. you, looking specifically at Inaris and at Prion, says a um, formal elvish farewell and speaks it uh, not perfect, but well enough. And then sort of I nods and I goes right back in Aquin as well. Oh. Seems to Pro please him. Prim Primordial it covers Aquin, I believe. Is that right? It's kind of like dialects, yeah, but yes. So, I speak a, a little bit. Nether looks at him and says, it's good to actually see you, Crack. Just begins to step away down the... Whoa. Hill. Do we know each other, miss? I'm... Uh... No. Huh. Right. And he turns around and returns to the grave he was digging so this is strange 25 years apart all 18 years old how old are the two that didn't go to the island well would that be the current Chandler's aye it's been 27 years since one of them was lost at sea. No debt has been paid, whatever that debt may be. Debt. You're muted. Does that feel right, DM? The math adds up. Mm. So. Walking back down the town. Some sort of ritual or bargain with whatever creatures on the other end of that. Aye, that's what we need to find stone out. Stone that requires a human sacrifice or a humanoid sacrifice, and that's what's become of all these poor Chandlers. Of the Chandlers, aye. Let's check the, of the uh, Chandlers the... specifically. Because we haven't checked the Prime Waters. Let's go check the Prime Waters. Do we get anything right. from the prime water graves? As you look around, do you see that some you will see maybe the worst one was the most recent. Um uh, the the thirteen with the surname Prime Water on it. Um they're all clustered together. They all say lost at sea, and some of them bear a moniker. Um um went down with the fancy and the fancy is written as if it's a ship are these the ones that happened to all be 1465 yes if you remember something as well one of the one of the council people said that the prime waters used to lose a ship every 25 years Right. Wrote that down. It's in my notes. Maybe that's why there was a fallout, because the prime waters refused to do it. And maybe a chandler was meant to go out. In well, I don't know. Maybe that's where the fallout is. No, it could be that maybe it was supposed to be one of each, and then one maybe. year, one family didn't. Aye, well, that's where the fallout is. Yeah. Now I kind of feel like we should talk to Galen. How old is that child? 15, the other child, 15. 15 or 16. Hmm. How long? Uh, so Neither, 20, you would only know her to be years older than you, but you, she could be older than that. Oh. I mean, a few years. She could be 18. Being, she could be 18. She could be, she's probably not in her 20s, but you knew her as 
a child older than you. So that could mean, you know, a range. So you would not rule out the fact that she's 18 or 19 or maybe even 20. If she's 20, then she was the one that was meant to die, which is why she's never been out to the island. That's why the debt's not been paid. So that's what we need what to find is, out, is what this debt is. And what would make her special that she would, that the family that's, would risk that? Maybe uh, they didn't want to lose a child. Another one. Look how many they've lost. No. There's got to be something else to it. Mm. I doubt mm. it. Another. I mean, debris. Yes. You grew, you grew up here, right? Well, like, from the time I was seven. Okay. So, did you ever hear any sort of... I know that when things like this happen, or there were tragedies or things that were somewhat unexplainable, in the place where I grew up, sometimes it's put into like a story or, or a song. Have you have you heard any sort of like folk tale or anything that might allude to this? Well, there's a song about um, ships going down all the time. Right. Uh, I'm, they're meant to be sort of, they're specific usually with each of their titles, but they're meant to be applicable to any ship. Yeah, ships go down a lot. The, I, yeah, I've seen a lot. Specific to the fancy? Do yeah. I recall? Um, make a history check. <laughs> Can I assist? <laughs> Recent salt marsh history is probably not something <laughs> that you are. I was well hoping to with. emotionally assist. <laughs> 13. 13 um you know that the fancy is talked about as something of a tragedy here um it's just sometimes re referred to um as a as a sad event yeah so nothing specific no details just, are discussed but just another tragic go dour yeah another <laughs> tragic ship lost so what's our move here do we speak to the daughter do we go and confront the chandler say that we know that their family has been killing off their children and we can stop it if that's what they want or do we try to find out where the chateau is and get more details there let's not promise that we can stop something because we might not be able to um and the chateau i feel like if we show up uninvited that's not, we might have to burn something again. And you guys don't like when we do that. So we don't we know where it is. We don't like it when you burn it in town. The girl. Oh, okay. Okay. It was an accident. Nobody saw it us. It was an accident. <laughs> Nobody saw us. That's fine. How would they know? I wasn't trying to burn down the mansion. Anyway, so we talk to the girl first, then. What yeah. are we gonna get? Maybe she's not been told. She might not even know. But she's part of this family. She is, but she might not know about this debt. Yeah, um, maybe I find not that pretty the likely. Debt. Well, maybe, maybe not the debt, but I don't know. In the same way that you know, you kind of hear things. <laughs> Have we seen any coffee. evidence of a curse that's been laid upon Saltmarsh? Um, you felt those rocks were pretty dang cursed um, that you were out at, though that's very personally tied to something that is communicating with you and is, you know, related to your awakening powers. That seems pretty curse-like, but... I mean, besides that, none of the sailors um, have complained about no fish. No, in fact, the fish have always been plentiful. Unusually so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. If anything, so, salt marsh seems to be charmed slightly. Oh. What about well, this just... this girl that we saved? 
What about asking her parents or whoever she is? Maybe they know something more about the prime waters and the chandlers. What about Somo? Well, that Somo must have some sort of history. All the questions we could ask them would only lead to more questions they could ask us. True. I think we're on our own here. And the, the only question now is the three things I said. Do we go try to find this chateau? Do we confront the Chandlers in their shop? Or do we try to speak to the daughter first? I don't think the daughter will help us at all. I think if the family's trying to protect her, they're not going to tell her anything. Then I suggest that we do it at night where no one else can see and we confront them as a group. We break in and scare them into telling us what's happening. Okay. Sounds great. I mean, yeah, sounds great. Does it? No. Sorry, and that doesn't seem genuine. Why don't we just go Sorry, and ask just right? starts to panic. <laughs> <laughs> An I'd, interesting plan. I'd so rather go on the honorable route and just ask them outright. We could start with that. Do we knock on the door? Like, like we did with the lizard folk. Remember, that turned out okay. We just knocked on the door. I think maybe perhaps one person should speak to them first. Who do you think it should be? We all know that I'm not the best with people. I put on a big show with the lizard folk, but that that was mostly luck, I think. You did very nicely with Craig. I did do nicely with Craig. If you think that I can do it, I could try. I mean, I am I am trained in in etiquette. I mean, I was never the best, but I did get credit for the class. Being a Triton and being a holy warrior and being sworn to protect the seas against evil entities, right? And the, and the people above were protected. Don't you think it would possibly be your duty to confront possible dabblers in a cult yes y yes yes it scares me but yes yeah i'll just i'll just channel the the strength and righteousness of persona because I, I i know that that is what persona would want me to do and I feel, I feel like uh, I I could do it. Do you, oh, I'm happy to go with. Are you sure you? I was gonna say, would you like someone to go with you? Someone will go with her. I'll go with. Yeah, I would like that. Let's I didn't know you also way. speak Aquin. A, a couple Not of not as us well as you. Do. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't. I didn't mean to imply that you didn't know how to speak it. I just never heard you speak it before, and I just didn't know. And I just think so really sorry. What? <laughs> what? She still scares me. My parents made sure that I learnt it because I knew I was from the sea. All right, to the Chandlers we go. Okay. No okay. Chandlering. So here, here we, we go, go with Chandler. Chandler. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds oh like God, everyone's going, but maybe someone's thing. going in. So as you guys approach, you will see um, the building, which you, you may have passed before, but none of you have ever been to directly. Um, it's a house and store together. The house is humble, but sturdy. There's a multi storied shop and workshop sitting against the water's edge. Barrels and tables displaying all sorts of sailing supplies for sale sit out in the day's sun. There are a number of men and women milling about, perusing the wares, speaking with leather apron shopkeepers. And uh, the first among them seems to be a middle-aged man. Um, who looks like this. And as soon as you hear him speak, 
Nether, you recognize the voice as that of the sort of current patriarch, um, uh, Talon. And sort of standing upon the decks of the house, keeping watch more from above, you can only assume is his wife, Gria. You hear, you see her having an argument with a red-haired child. And after some time, you hear a baby cry from within the home. And then running down away, tears um, pouting, sort of looking just irritated, um, is a younger child who kind of runs and then sits down in the corner of the yard. Um, and before we meet any of these new characters, I think this is, is where we will take our break because we're about two hours in. Which... Um, cool. So let's get back. Let's get back into this. For those of you hopping in a little bit late, the uh, group, after some discussion, went to a cemetery in which they found that there has been a Chandler that has died every 25 years exactly someone of the chandler family has died in fact they have been lost at sea and each one of them was 20 or was 18 years old when this happened they were also able to deduce by the year that this has not happened in about 27 years so uh, their rumor or the um the operating theory is that perhaps this is some sort of ritual that has not happened and is now lapsed two years late. And they approached the Chandler home, which is also the Chandler shop, two in one. The, sh the sort of three tiered shop is abutting the water. And they also have a little bit of a uh, um, market out in front for anything you could ever need on a ship, as well as small boat repairs and whatnot. Those people are milling about there, as is the um, uh, current um, uh, head of the family. Um, I almost, I almost forgot his name again. Um, Talon. Talon. Yeah. Yes. And his wife, Gria is up on the, um, is up on the, uh, balcony of the home. And they also heard a small child crying out from within the house. Then they saw a young, a young woman, um, arguing with the, older woman at the top, old, arguing with Gria, who kind of ran down the stairs and ran away. And Nether, you would know that the um, uh, the young Kaylin was known for her red hair. So um, this is likely her. Well, that's so these what are red the hair looks like. Yes. This is what you see before you now. Well, I think... Serene, Prion, you're on. Let's go and say hello. I would definitely play up the holy warrior angle. Okay. Can I practice with you first? Sure. Okay. <clears throat> hello. My name is Serene Alerna. And have you heard the good news of the word of Persona? And I've heard you're doing bad stuff. And Persona wouldn't like that. No, 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 uh, no. Okay. Let's not assume they're doing bad stuff. I thought that, that that's why we're here, because they're doing bad stuff. It may not even be bad. It may be a pact that they had to do many years ago to save someone's life. We don't know. Okay. Well, let's not assume so, that it's an evil pact. Okay. So what, what suggestions do you have? Let's just go and ask them. Let's just go and say hello. Just say, look, we're... We're looking for information. Okay. Okay. What would you say? The, uh, what was the, the cult called again? Thalassic the, League. Yeah, Thalassic League. Thoracic League. For Although the I, Thoracic I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Thalassic. Thalassic. An L. Like Velasic, like Vlasic. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> The Vlasic League. The Vlasic League crunch. <laughs> We're looking for the crunchiest pickle you've got. <laughs> Kosher dill, if you don't mind. <laughs> I don't know. 
<laughs> Neither do I. It made no if sense. If it's not a plastic, it's not a pickle. Okay. <laughs> if it's not a plastic, it's not a pickle. It must be an emergency. Meow. <laughs> yes, it is. Definitely it is. Yeah. Okay, so... Okay. Let's just be yourself. You haven't been to Brooklyn. Uh, anyway. <laughs> you haven't had a good coach at <laughs> <laughs> All right, get it together. <sighs> Draw it. <laughs> what happened? What happened? What did I do? Okay. <laughs> so she's gonna walk up with Prion to. Okay. <clears throat> um. What's her name? You are going up to who? We're going up to the daughter. Yeah, she's girl. kind of up at the, um, up on this little hill. Um, this is kind of actually how the building setup looks. She's kind of run away. She has a bit of net and a marlin spike in her hand, and is kind of just tending towards a bit of net. Just kind of, it's almost like repair, but more just fiddling and kind of looking down at her feet. Um, I'm going to as you approach, it. she looks up. Excuse me. Hmm? I thought they were going to talk to the parents. parents. Oh, I thought so too, but it looked like they were approaching the young girl. I thought they were approaching the young woman. That's what I, I heard, so. was confused. Saran just beelining for the wrong person. Just like, just like Saran. I was going to say. I give her a this call. Is going. <clears throat> Saran. Oh. The yeah. parents. Oh, the parents. Sure. Okay. Yeah. They're a little bit older like you, so if you want to try to talk to them first... That might be more appropriate. I'm not that old. Oh, 47. My age too. is 7 years. On your way to uh, towards Talon, you <laughs> look a number of people, some um, uh, repairing some jolly boats, some selling nets, others with different furnishings, sextants, compasses, um, telescopes, all uh, spyglasses, all this kind of stuff. And as you continue to walk past all of these stands, these little uh, displays of any kind of seagoing wares you could need approaching him, he's at a table looking like he's almost doing some kind of inventory or accounting, scribbling in a large ledger that's splayed across a table. He looks up and down again, keeps writing, and then he looks up again seeing you come and squints at both of you looking between the two of you and then actually looks up the hill towards where the rest of you are if you are visible. Nether is not. Okay. Good afternoon. I don't know if you guys are hiding or not, but he kind of looks around um, after seeing the two of you coming. So, if you're not hiding, he does look up and try to and sees you, Talise, and you and Eris up on the hill, and then turns towards you, Prion, and you, Saran, again once more, and says, uh, the crew members of the sea ghost have your dwarves have picked up their supplies i believe we fulfilled the requisition order is there something else you required no you, you, you should have supplied you. everything already i we have uh, this is more of a personal matter i don't follow where you know what a, you know what adventurers are like they dig deep into the history of towns and places and we're trying to figure out about a certain Las uh, Vlasic League <laughs> I know don't exist right well they probably did at some point I'm sure some Lord had some sort of extravagant parties in the deepest reaches of his keep somewhere and yeah, I... dark cloaks and too much wine and unsavory deeds became fun for those who craved the power. Something like that, I'm sure. What, what did you and the prime waters fall out <laughs> no, that is personal. I know. I I'm have... sorry. Go on, Saran. Uh, hi, I'm Saran. 
Alaranoth. I don't know if we've met before. I don't think that we've personally met, but I, I we loved the wares that you gave us for our ship that we bought, that we bought for the ship. Um, so this town is so, so interesting and multifaceted. Um, the graveyard is particularly interesting. I, I noticed there's a, there's a kind of, your family has maybe in the past, maybe not now, but, uh, in the past experienced, experienced tragedies that must've been difficult. You can see where we're going with this, eh? The something wrong. My family, all the families of Salt Marsh, have lost people to the waves. Aye, and is they have, but not, not all of them were eighteen years old and twenty-five years apart. Well, the last one was twenty-seven years ago. Um, Just what are you implying? As as a Triton, we want to help, um, and as as a Paladin, uh, I follow Persona, and the Tritons we have vowed to be protectors of of the the world beneath the waves and above, and it just seems that perhaps there may be something larger at, at work, and she's looking to Prion this whole time, kind of like looking for. No, he's not in. Okay. Um, um, it seems like maybe, maybe we could we could help. Make a persuasion check. Okay. We've we've encountered this cult out to sea, and they say a debt has to be paid. We're trying to work out what that is. And we're starting to put clues together. We're not here to hunt you down. We're here to help. We're trying to find out and figure out what's going on. Please help 13. us. 13. We rolled an 8 plus 5. Oh, I have inspiration. Did she get advantage? You already rolled. Did I'm she get such advantage? a dick. I do this every time. That's Prion, you advantage. can also make a persuasion check. <laughs> oh, God. All right, Freon. Maybe you should use your inspiration. I could probably. I've got to use my. I've got minus one. I think. That's it. Uh, Yeah, should you use your inspiration? Oh yeah, I've got minus one. Right, I'm using my inspiration. Come on. Use RP to completely circumvent the encounter. I rolled a fifteen and an eleven, so fourteen. He looks at both of you and says. Whatever it is that you've strung together, this is, I have no interest in chasing whatever fairy tales you've created. You've been to the graveyard, have you not? Every Uh, 25 years. I've buried my niece in that graveyard, yes. I know. Every 25 years. 18 years old, all of them. It's been 27 since the last death. Last person that was buried or lost to sea. I looked to his younger daughter. Help us. We want to... If there's an evil cult at hand, we want to rid this thing. We're here to help Salt Marsh. We're not here to fight it. Is that so... The whole reason I came up here. As I said, we've been out to sea. We've been fighting this league, this cult. Really? What exactly have you encountered? Lots of tentacles. Lots of tentacles. Um, and a big, a big, like, giant? Wow. Is he asking about what we brought Humanoids. Together? Humans taken over by creatures of the sea, like octopus. 
sounds terrifying. It wasn't right. great. I can point you to a tavern. I'm sure some sailors would buy you plenty of drinks for these tales. But unless there's anything else, I'll ask you to leave. Sure. No, Have that, a good day. That we, we want to help. We've told Zorian. him that, Zoran. We've told I, him I we want to help. He doesn't want helping, so let's go. Thank you, sir. And he watches you with hard, hard eyes your whole way retreating and as you turn around he kind of looks up and says Kaylin time to go inside but in the meantime during this conversation Nether I believe you mentioned you had something you wanted to do briefly so I'm going to have Dahl go over and close to where Kaylin is and I'm going to speak to her through him with my own voice. Hello. What? Who's... Okay, now this what? is going to seem strange. But it's just a bit of magic. A kind of a trick sort of thing you see at a fair. Are you... Is this him? Are you... Of sorts. Keladek? Well... I don't think Keladek would... would speak in this particular way, but... Um, let's say that I am an associate of Keladek's. And I'd like to speak with you. Okay. Do you think I don't know if perhaps, I should be doing this? I could help you with something, perhaps. Um. Uh, maybe, but what is it that you want? To talk. About what? Well, we're trying to find some things out. And I think you might have some of the answers. We're interested in some history that your families have, your family and other families in town have. There's a place that we've heard a lot about. And we're trying to figure out how to get there, or at least how to put it on a map. It's called the Chateau. I'm wondering if you know anything about that. She kind of shoves the Marlin spike into the ground next to her. It's like, just everyone is going there, I guess. My I'm not. Would you My not cousin like to go? and her new ba and her baby are going, and yeah, I've always wanted to go. I was training to go my whole life. I, I had to do one sailing expedition. That was what I was supposed to do. I was finally ready. I was training for it, and then they said it wasn't it wasn't happening. Who said? Didn't that? get the commission. My mom. She. My my whole life, she showed me the damn box with the with the jewel and the spike and the compass, and told me that I was going to go out and make them proud and do all the stuff that all our family's done before. And then just, just didn't I don't know. And now I don't get to go when even my my cousin gets to go and her baby gets to go grow up there. Well, I had to just grow up in this fishy shithole the whole time. <sighs> I'm sorry. Oh, that's all sorry. Right. Um, hey, what would you do if for the next hour, no one could see you? I'd go say goodbye to my little cousin, I guess. And but you're not, maybe, they're not letting you say goodbye to your cousin. No, I guess she and... They're preparing to go to the chateau and I can't see them or whatever. I don't know. Well, if you were invisible, you could. You could even go and look at that box or... I don't know. 
when I was your age, I think being invisible might have been fun for an hour. But if there's something else you want. Are you going to like... Is this going to like hurt me nope, later? Not at all. And what do you... What do you want? Well, I might tag along. Make sure that you're safe. Oh. Um. Where are you? I'm close. This is kind of weird. Make a magic, persuasion check. Ma magic's like that. Persuasion check! Oh, no! And a high charisma. Oh, another 16 on the die. So, natural, uh, a dirty 20. Touchy 20. Okay. What was it? Oh, yes. Cool. You're just going to, like, follow? Yep. And after they'll probably be a little freaked out about the fact that they can't find you, but... You know, maybe if they're angry for a little while, you know, sometimes it's important to have privacy, don't you think? Yeah. Hey, hey, Keladek. Mm -hmm. Um, when, when this is done and once, once she leaves and my little and the baby and my cousin leave and everything, I don't know what wizards need, but if you, I'm... I'm handy at fixing things. I trained as a sailor, even though I never got to sail. I can, I can splice rope. I can fix nets. I can, I'm, I'm actually stronger than I look. I can help out if you, if you need something. Do you want to I, go out to sea? I just don't want to be here anymore. Well, I happen to know of a group of people who have a ship who would be very happy to have someone who's skilled who doesn't want to be here anymore really mm. okay okay so invisible for an hour and i'll be watching you do whatever you want to do <sighs> okay all right, a doll goes over and boom, touches her on her nose and casts invisibility. Oh. And that's it. You're invisible. And I think people are going to realize that any second. Kaylin! Kaylin, come here. Girl, where'd you go? God damn it. Korea, she's run off again. And you see the woman up at the top just sort of shake her head and, and um, disapproval. And um, he begins to close up his ledger. He takes it and recede and goes back into the shop while she sort of departs and goes back into the home. Now, so Dal will follow her and help her through any opening any doors or any windows or anything like that that she might have trouble with for whatever reason, and um, in the meantime, I'm going to quickly break contact with him and speak to Inaris and Talise and tell them what's going on. And about at this point, Saran and Priyan are returning. So I let you all know what's going on, and then I hold out a hand to grab on to Saran, and I go back into watching through Doll's eyes. So... Nether will communicate to you a few things, the rest of the group, that Nether, you see this, but I imagine you're just kind of talking and relaying all of this as it comes. Right. Um, she does sneak in and um, goes to a nice, well, a comfortable, warm, sturdy bedroom um, that appears to be the master bedroom and starts rummaging around in a few things. And she does pull out this mahogany box that she ends up finding in one of the drawers. Opening it up, there is 
an ancient looking compass, a marlin spike, which is a traditional sailor's tool used to help splice rope and untie knots and such. And an interesting looking piece of scrimshaw. Looks like it's carved from not so much tooth, but bone. And it's in the figure of a skull, but it has squid-like tentacles, almost like a skull that is crowned like a squid with writhing tentacles around it. And um, um, she kind of mum mumbles to herself. She holds it in her hands and rubs her fingers over this little trinket and says, I will make my offering like all the other great sailors of my family. I will. And she kind of tucks it away in her clothes and then closes the box and puts that on her person as well, which then disappears. She then goes to another room where in a small bassinet, a young child is sleeping. Um, and then on the, um, uh, almost a newborn actually is sleeping. And then on the bed sort of lying, looking exhausted is another young woman, probably in her mid twenties or so. Um, easy to assume that it's the mother and there are packed bags, um, at least two packed bags sitting at the foot of the bed. She seems to be getting rest and Kaylin approaches carefully and then you can hear sigh and then just whisper I'll I'll earn my way there come see you and help you raise the little one like I promised I, I'll, I'll follow you somehow I don't understand, but Ugh. and she turns around and then quietly leaves that room. The rest of the time, she just kind of spends wandering around a little before walking out of the house and just going and sitting at the edge of a dock, putting your feet in the water, taking off her shoes, just kind of splashing her feet in the cool water of salt marsh. She ends up taking out the box, opening it and looking at the Marlin spike, the compass and the, um, then taking out the piece of scrimshaw again and just kind of staring at it as she startles herself as she returns to vision and kind of looks about making sure that no one saw her and it seems no one has. Well, what do we do with this information friends? Mm. Well, it sounds like that skull thing, isn't that somewhat similar to what we are looking for, the creature? Hmm. Uh, it, does it seem like a holy symbol? Um, <clears throat> or unholy symbol? Yeah, uh, make a religion check. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> and I mean... Sure. In... You know, Nether being so familiar with holy symbols. Yeah. <laughs> and I was going to be like, mm, that. Yes. Well, that's another dirty 20 with a roll of 18 oh. on the die and a plus wow. two, plus two to my intelligence. So a very carefully constructed item. Um, you think it could be, but there's no obvious way to wear it. She holds it and it's really a token it's not something that can be there's no obvious place to string it on a necklace there's it's not even like a tooth where you could easily lasso it and um or put a um like a bowl and knot or something on it and and hold it it's very much just something to hold or to keep or to hold in your hand or your pocket 
more like a trinket. So my question would be then, is it in its visage similar to the creature that we encountered? Like, is it a is it an approximate like representation? It just sounded... she describes it. the The creature you encountered was sort of a hybrid, right? Right. It's like a man, half man and half octopus. This looks like it's like a skull. And then it's like if you took an octopus with the tentacles sort of wrapping around it, almost like a mane, and then replace sort of the head of the octopus with the visage of a skull. That's like sort of what that looks skull. like. Yes. Okay. So it's not the same. No, not exactly. <laughs> okay, but similar. <laughs> okay, thanks. So um, should we go <laughs> talk to her? Well, it uh, seems like you have the greatest connection and rapport with her why don't you go talk to her again i mean we could uh, accompany you but i think you were in the right idea where too many people here might scare her yeah well i'm not exactly unscary i mean oh that's right she thought you were somebody else I'll i give can, it a try but just be ready you. to stop her if she runs because i think it's important to have to see what she's got okay all right, so I go just find where she is. yourself. It's amazing advice. <laughs> so you kind of go out <clears throat> to the edge of this dock on the edge of their property. She's sitting there just kicking her feet in the water gently, just kind of splashing. Her, mostly just her ankles are wet. And, um, she's got her shoes to her side, and she's just kind of focusing on this item in her hands. So I start walking down the... She kind of looks pier. up behind you and, um, I'm sorry, this is, it's not a very sturdy dock. There's, a, can I help you? Oh, I was just going to sit with you for a bit. All the markets are okay. Um, who are you? Uh, my name is Debris. But, uh, you seem to think I was working with Kaladek. That was you? It was you lie to me well i thought well i am working with keladek i didn't lie about that but i have to admit i was oh. surprised that you thought that that's what it was right off the bat what as, about this the ship and everything and that's not a lie either we can definitely take you somewhere if that's where you want to go but i think we might need a bit of more information first Could we perhaps arrange some sort of deal? You give us information, tell us what we want to know, um, and then we'll take you where you want to go. Maybe I'm. This is. It's all just really confusing. Uh, it is. It is. Uh, will you? What did you? Um, what did you have in mind? Well, we're trying to understand the whole relationship your family has with this chateau this this special let's say i know tradition. it's great it's the greatest place and they all go there i know i've heard it so many times <sighs> do you know why you didn't no i just uh. Was there someone I just someone know that else who told you that you couldn't? Well, my my, it's what we all do. Look, I mean, do you see any kids here besides my cousin's baby? They all go to the chateau to grow up. It's what happens when anyone gets married too. When any when anyone marries a chandler, oh, you get to go off to the chateau and spend however much of your life there, and then come back and work the shop. It's it's what happened with all the people, your mother and father as well. Yeah, it's what everyone's done. It's, but I was, you know, I was supposed to stay here and learn the trade so I could be one of the ones that takes over. You know, I was, I'm, I was supposed to be, you know, I, I didn't get it. My mother used to, she would 
talk to me about it and she would she called me a promised one and you know I knew they promised me that the business would be mine then because I would learn the trade of the seas because I was working on all of that and I was going to be good at it so I could take over when 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 my dad got too old and he went out to the chateau to stay for a while you know hmm is that really what you want is what really what yeah I mean I've heard it's amazing it's beautiful with there's a g enormous garden with fruit trees and, and the you know glass windows as tall as the room yeah. marble floors it's the wealth of what we spent i mean look at this place this is nothing it's what it's what all of the wealth we've we've um accumulated in salt marsh has gone to it's it's my family's place, but I've never gotten to see it. Do you know how to get there? No, I, I have no idea. I've never seen it on a map. I've not for trying either. I thought about stowing away with my cousin. I think they're going tomorrow morning, but how old is your cousin? I'm not allowed to go. She's. 26 or something like that. Hmm. Do you think maybe it's because she's older? Maybe. Has she I been, mean, has she she been got, trained she just, as a promised one as well? No, no, no. She just gave birth. So they're going to take the baby out there because it's better to grow up out there. You know, that's milder climate. And oh, all my grandparents and, you know, my aunts and uncles all live out there and it's a good place to grow up. It's where my dad grew up. My, you know. The baby is here and where's your cousin? No, she's in there. She's here. She was, um, if you were seeing, she was the one in the bed. I see. She was oh, what are one of my friends and she's the... not really my cousin. She's only by marriage, but my, my real cousin's been out to sea for a while. I haven't seen him for, I guess, years. What, uh, what were those things in that box? Oh, these, um, well, this is a really nice Marlin spike, um, traditional one, this and the compass. It looks miss, very old. My mother used, yeah. Um, I mean, it's ancient. There's even a little bit of crusted salt on here. It's like it, maybe someone pulled it out of the depths at one point. I don't know. It's, but it functions perfectly. Hmm. And this, and she holds up the piece of scrimshaw. This way. I know it's kind of creepy, but you know, you know, figureheads are sometimes that way. Sailors tails are sort of that way. You know, you got to put on a frightening face to scare away anything that would drag you down. Oh, I know all about that. Yeah. Pointed my face. <sighs> Lawrence. <sighs> yeah. So she told me this story that We, it's a tradition that when out there we have a, our family would take one of these and when deep at sea and no land in sight, casting it into the sea will calm the waters and ensure for safe voyages ahead. One of... One it's of good little... luck. It's a little good luck ritual. And... You are, and once I did that, once and then once I, you know, got a hold of a, a whale's tooth or, uh, you know, a great fish skull or something like that, I could carve my own and leave it for the next one to cast into the sea. It's a tradition. Hmm. I was supposed to do it. 
years ago, but here I am, and I still haven't... St stupid uncle and that Miss Primewater bitch kicking him out. They're... they're... <sighs> Adults can be so stupid, you know? You're right about that. <sighs> well... Fair is fair. You've been very open and straight. If it's what you truly want, you can come aboard our ship. Can I... Uh, my cousin sets out in the morning, though, for, for the chateau. I think perhaps Early. we might try and do the same. Really? I'm worried. I'm worried that perhaps things aren't as they seem, despite what you've been told. And if there is a island that has an amazing chateau on it, well, I'd, I'd like to see it, at least to know where it is. I but mean, maybe... I mean, it must be hard to get supplies out there. I mean, you you guys have a ship, yeah? We do. Maybe you could help bring supplies out there, and I could do that, and maybe I could come see it that way and help bring, help bring That's you know... a very good idea. Yeah. What do you think they I would mean, need? Well, I don't know. Um, lamp oil and parchment. Um, we have those. Yeah, and um, what couldn't they get out there? Oh, some, maybe some cured meats. I'm sure they have plenty of fish, but they, they probably like some salted pork and we some are fully prepared sausages. to sail with all of these things. That'd be great. All right. Well, would you like to come and meet some of the rest of the crew? She kind of looks over her shoulder back to the back of the house. Okay. I can hold my own too. I can I'm a, I'm a trained sailor. I can't wait to see it. <sighs> I'm the first mate, by the way. You've made a very good impression. Yes, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. I lead her back to the group and introduce right. her. Hi. Wow. Um, are you the, you all look friendly, ex I mean, except for you, but. That's just how she looks. Wait, which, oh. who are you pointing at? <laughs> Her or me? It we was, it, it was well. a Daenerys. I'm... That's what I was like, it's gotta be one of the two of us. It's never anyone else. I'm Sarayan. Extends her webbed hand. Are you, are you, uh, are, are you, um, a Triton? Wow. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And you're a human. You. It's good to meet you. I am a right. human. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, Sometimes there, there are people who have multiple races in them. And so, so I just want to know exactly what everyone is. Cause I'm, I'm taking, I'm on my pilgrimage. We'll talk more later. Okay. So right, okay. While she talks and meets with the rest of the group, I'm definitely yeah. going to convey all the information that I got to Prion. Of course. <laughs> and try to figure out what the hell we do now, because if we go out on the sea with her, she's just going to throw that thing in the water and probably get eaten. We don't really want that, right? <laughs> no. 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 But maybe now that we have her, it sort of feels like kidnapping. I was gonna say, no, what about a parent? 20. I was like, she's 20. She went of her own accord. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. consensual. It's not kidnapping. Yeah, she's an adult. It's fine. Have we confirmed her age? Uh, all right. Did we? How old are you, Kayla? Well, she, she <laughs> be... I was gonna be 
like, hey. I'm, 20, I'm 20 years old. All right. All right Thank you. Okay. I was going to say, if it's been 27 years, I was over 25 years. She should have gone 10 years ago. She would have been 18. So, <laughs> what are your parents going to say? next character. Press next X character. to doubt. Yeah. <laughs> Press what X to, to doubt. <laughs> what are your parents going to say nice. about joining our crew? Oh, the same thing all parents say, I'm sure. They're not going to know. I don't care. It might be it might be harder to get some supplies in town because that's kind of their thing but uh, I I know a lot of people and some of the merchants, you know, they like me so I could probably make it work anyway. Well, welcome aboard. All of our crew get 10% of what we find. <laughs> 10 and 10. Yeah, I, I know that. Can you fight? Yeah, I can. Yeah, but I'm more of a sailor than a fighter, but of course, sailors, sailors have to be fighters. Well, we've got plenty of people who can train you if you want training. I can I've fight by trained. making sure that you can wheel around a broadside and hit your weapons at the ship quick, quick, quicker than anyone else, and that your mass isn't going to be vulnerable or... You're not going to have a any Yours. sort of listing topsail. <laughs> That's fighting in its own oh, way. Goodness. Have you have it's you ever? Great. It's what we need. Have you ever actually fought somebody? I mean, I um. There's no right or wrong answer. I punched this boy in the nose once in the alley because he was, well. Mm, because I caught him doing something awful to one of the graves of my <gasps> family. I don't think he meant anything by it, but it made me really angry. So I punched him really hard, and then I hit his head against the wall and kind of broke his tooth a little. So he, so he bled. <laughs> I like this. Yeah. <laughs> I just know that the first time, as someone who has been classically trained in fighting. Um, the first time that I actually did it and there was blood, it was pretty shocking. So just, just prepare yourself for that. If you're leaving home for the first time. Let's hope we don't need I to fight she's then. fine. I'm like, she's gonna be great! And Jalise will put her arm around her a little bit. And be like, yeah! <laughs> you make sure oh, wow. you the ship straight and I'll stand in front of whatever's gonna hit you. Me too. I'd, I'd shake your hand, but you said I'm scary, so... Which is I'm right. sorry. I, I say that all the time. Don't apologize. She's and she scary. hates me. She's awesome. Well, I kind of like that. I kind of want. Can I be? Can you teach me how to be scary? No. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and I'll put my arm around her too. You're gonna wow. fit in just fine. We got you. Yeah, we we stole her away done? from the circus. Yeah. <laughs> kind of like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Now there are three circus. of us. So reaches Great. over her awesome. hand and extends a middle finger to her house as she walks away with <laughs> you guys arm in arm. And there is um, will immediately teach her a drow cuss word. Say that. <laughs> yeah. Ibleth. Yeah. Oh god. Yep. We're friends. Do you want to be friends? We're friends. Is that how this works? Uh, yes. There you All go, right, Serene. Finally. You just need to be able to swear and drow. I mean, that is half of, you know, half of what we do is just go around swearing. I'm Pretty the much. quartermaster, by the way. Just so you know. Oh. I just do random shit. I don't really have a title. So there's that. She's just, she's just scared. All right. I tried to fix the place, but I end up breaking it. <laughs> <laughs> and we get her back to the ship. Yeah. Get her squared away. <laughs> To the ship. With all that. And then, when she's all tucked away in bed, <laughs> we cut her throat. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> that is the like, yeah. only two of them again. <laughs> and now we get her stuff. That's right. We take her suddenly, stuff. Suddenly, Jolex, they're... <laughs> L licking the blood off the floor. <laughs> like a cat yeah. licking milk out of a saucer. Yeah. Joe, like, leave it. Leave like, it. To <laughs> so. <laughs> For 
little Leave it. rib. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. So the question now is, what do we do with this? Do we inform her parents and see what they do? Do well, we would... bring her with us and try to follow her cousinship? Yeah. Because I feel like if we go tell her parents, they're going to stop her. That's going to be hard to do. It's hard to follow a ship without B. It's not like, follow that ship! And then you get lost in the yeah. cabs. Yeah, they're they're going to know that we're following them. And they're either going to try to lose us or they're going to try and turn around and shoot us. Z says, sorry, Liz, break out the holy water spray bottle, which is like my favorite <laughs> follow up <laughs> to the bad. <laughs> No. Wait, wait, wait. No. no! 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 <laughs> Tear a few pages out of your holy book and roll them up and do a thing. And you, like, <laughs> like... <laughs> so leave it. Sorry. I mean, <laughs> we've done a thing here. We have. We have. You've abducted some... a kid. Yeah. We have, no, we have... Lassie. She's twenty years us. old. She's twenty years she old. Has to come with us. An she adult came... has to come with us. She came of her own accord. She gave us the information <laughs> that we were looking for, and in return, we've given her birth on the ship. Now, <laughs> what does that gain us in terms of getting to the bottom of the Chandlers? Do we have? I mean, I think we're, I feel like we're still trying to figure out whether or not the current channelers here are baddies or not. I mean, yeah. it sounds like, you know, if this chateau is a thing, do all, I mean, if they come back, then it's not like they're going out there to be murdered. I don't think I mean, they come back. No, I don't think there is a chateau. Of them. But she said well, that she her said father her... and her mother had both gone. Is that what they right. said? She she That's, did say that, yeah, but she, she that, said that could be just a parent lie. She yeah, says just... that that all of all of the children, all the children go out to the chateau to be raised, and then they come back, and all that has happened with all of her uh, family. So either they've all been lying to her, and none of them did this thing. Mm. There's no chateau. But it sounds like there is, if they're leaving tomorrow, if they actually have a ship and her baby cousin is going out there. I mean, that the, the cousin is going to do the thing that everybody has been said that they've done. And she is the promised one. She is the one that has to go out, and she is the sacrifice. Everybody else goes to be inducted into the rituals and becomes priests or whatever, blah, blah, blah. And she is the one who gets sacrificed. That is what I'm taking away from this. Yeah. Does that sound right? It's a tough one, isn't it? I mean, so no if that's the case, chateau. then that means that her father and is in on it, and it is the, the only thing that I don't understand is why she was not used in the way that she was set up to be used. If Probably she, all, if she trained, to be sacrificed. Well, well, if she yeah, trained, say... well, if they trained her all her life to do this thing and saying she is the her mother said she's the promised one she all this stuff and if it was this thing that was supposed to happen and then suddenly it's not supposed to happen is it have to do with the fact that the families have split and There's so an argument, that yeah yeah their arguments and they're like well fine if you're not gonna do this thing that you're supposed to do we're not gonna make the sacrifice anymore so if that's the case that it's not altruistic at all yeah. They're not trying to save the daughter at all. They're just trying to to so. put the screws on on whatever this deal was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so that that's what I don't know. I mean, I feel like now that we have her daughter, we, we're in a position to go and say, "Hey, your daughter is coming with us out to sea. How do you feel about that?" And if they're like freak out about it in the way that a parent should, then we know one thing. If they try to kill us that we know another thing um and if they don't care at all or if maybe they may they might think it's better for her to get out and get away and leave salt marsh then that tells us another thing i think we might need liz's armor before we do any combat yeah well if they're leaving tomorrow morning then so are we When's this, uh... What's the call, guys? <laughs> what about a bit of uh, sabotage the ship? Maybe. Ooh, that's a great idea. So Maybe we like... burn it? No, no. no. Yeah. Like stall them half no. a day. 
Is that sabotage burning? Sabotage. <laughs> it's sabotage. <laughs> uh, we need to we need to break the rudder. Is that the steering thingy? That's yeah. If we cut the ropes away from the rudder, I'll or break the rudder or keep the rudder from being able to move. That's something that we can get at to a certain extent under the water. And there are those of us here who are good at that. I'm yeah, very good I'm... at being under the water. Yeah. There are three of us that could definitely go down to do that. To the water. The so water. We could definitely be faced with the sea. nasty. I can keep an eye on Kaylin while you're sabotaging the ship. All right, so that's a great idea. We'll sabotage the ship, give ourselves some more time so that we can get the armor, definitely. Um, and we'll keep Kaylin safe as we observe what the Chandlers do in the face of their missing daughter. How's that? Works for me. Yes. All right. So who's going to sabotage the ship? Me. <laughs> She's really excited for that. I say we go in twos. Well, there's only three of us that can go. Four. Into... Under the sea. Under the sea. <laughs> under the sea. I'm can sorry. Nether de de Oh, yep. she can? Okay. okay. Wait, Nether can go underwater now? Uh-huh. But she can't be healed by me. <laughs> Nope. I, I I think that this is yeah I, I like Priyan's idea two people it sounds like you know one person to do the job and one person to watch or maybe you know one person to help the other person do the job as in helping so um so two Can people I have a question oh. Go so for this it. is happening before it's happening I... right now yeah so I don't feel like I should be the one to be under the water then because I have Agreed. zero protection. So I'll hang out and try to bring uh, Kaylin back over to Prion and Talise. Side. <laughs> yeah, we can do it. And you then, guys are on. And then I guess we'll just alternate out so it is three as needed. Put me in, coach. Put me in, coach. <laughs> we'll probably but enter the water with... nowhere don't near their boat, though. Yes, we should go into the water near our boat. Mm hmm. So it's Prion and Talise? Yeah. Yes. You guys can both breathe underwater, correct? Yeah. I can breathe underwater for a long time. No, sorry, I can't. I can hold my breath for a long time. I can't breathe underwater. <laughs> I can. And I was like, wait. No sense. <laughs> I, can, yeah. I can breathe sorry. for a long time. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I like that's good. <laughs> it's an yeah, important I, skill I to learn. Mean. But Melvin, actually heard, Melvin can I, do. Uh, uh, uh pre war which is a how long does that last eight hours yes yeah, a long time yeah go wake up melvin i'm not feeling good cast a spell on me <laughs> <laughs> do, it. do it do it do it do it all right it. with palpatine pressure oh, he will... so I need it. <laughs> oh. help me <laughs> oh my god what is happening <laughs> That was incredible. Well, I need to get the spray bottle out, guys. Yes. Somebody clip that immediately. Immediately, please. I need that now as, like, my new ring. Leave it. Leave <laughs> it. No. Bad. Bad. Bad Palpatine. So good. You must be brought to trial. Sorry. Lord. <laughs> something. Something Hayden Christensen. Or something. Anyway. Oh, man. Um, He's so good. Something, something. <laughs> Sorry. Did we watch the same film? Oh, dear. Um, sand. Anyway, uh, and, and so I hate sand. you, where are we? Yes, we're going under the Melvin water. Is ca Melvin, is Melvin will water cast. Will, will cast water breathing, and that's fine. You'll be able to go under the water. No, I can't go full seal you team six on this. So. And you missed it. I took it earlier, so I know, but it was <laughs> so over. perfect. He could have. It was a missed opportunity. Da, da, it. Da, 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 da. Oh, the I... show and uh... how meta. <laughs> so Jesus. Um, despite obviously under the water helps, but as you approach the um, house itself, I will need both of you to make a stealth check. 
and it'd be easy to disturb the water when rising to the top near where the boat actually is. So you will need to be, have some finesse about this. God, I've got disadvantage. Me too. But I still have disadvantage underwater? You, I don't think you do, Serene, because you're not wearing armor. Serene's not doing it. Serene's not doing it. Oh, it's, sorry, it's... It's me. Oh, you guys sent some stealthy people to do this. Tilly's yours is medium armor, isn't it? I mean, I was thinking they were literally going to come up under the ship and just, like... Yeah, I thought I was going to be under the ship because I'm not surfacing because I can't breathe. Yeah, we're staying underwater. We're damaging it underwater, not... It's true, but... Just like anything where you're doing it stealthily, if you were just <laughs> just swimming in heavy armor, even if you have a swim speed, you're going to be displacing a lot of water and to not be casting bubbles and to accidentally bump into the ship. All of this takes a little bit of finesse to not be detected. All right. To- now, now that that's been established, may we perhaps send another person along who could potentially help? Well, or sure. I could, you guys, you guys I mean, see I could cast the two water. of them dive in, and an absolute wake being created as they start to go oh. away. You think, wait, 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 come back, wait. All right, um, I can see that from my dark vision limit away. All right, um, <laughs> I'll go also. Can you? I can. Okay. Those. Let's go. But Very I can well. also, you know, <laughs> shape water so I can, yeah. like, change the direction of the water so it can. Yes, happen. yes. So can I. So the rules were already made. I've not made mine yet. Um, however, may I cast darkness in such a way that it is a globe of darkness that just sort of the very tip of it comes up. <laughs> And covers How ironic planet. that you are actually making yourself go invisible beyond your glitchy <laughs> ass green screen. <laughs> I glass darkness. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, oh, that's it's, so it's working good. too well. What, what's happening? Was Peter? Peter. Again. Again. He's Peter, gone. I'm scared. I'm scared, Peter. <laughs> Wait. Oh, okay. Oh. Has it been an hour already? So I will actually I will cast darkness to help with um, this this the um, the sneak ink sneak using um, one of Nether's uh, uh, racial abilities. Sneak. So what were you doing? And of the water, she, go, she, casts, she casts it on um, a. Uh, for that. <laughs> She casts it on a small shell and hands it to Dahl, who also has um, a, uh, a swim speed now. Uh, so he swims along oh. and has it. And so now um, he can put it inside his clothing to make it go away if she wants it. And he can bring it out to make it cast. Interesting. So- all right. In that case, Nether, make a stealth check at advantage, and we'll take Talisa's eighteen. Okay. What do stealth I get? check at advantage. What? What am I rolling? I haven't rolled yet. Are you still going? I'm assuming I was still going. Yeah. Well, well in that case make a stealth check at this at advantage. <laughs> Twelve. Or if you have disadvantaging oh. armor at a regular roll. Oh, well, I rolled two in one go, but there's a, I rolled a nine and a ten, so. I've got no bonuses. So the ten. Well, I, yeah. I rolled at the same time. So if it was just literally, if it was. Do you have disadvantage a, because of your armor? I have disadvantage because of my armor. Yet. Yeah. Roll a single dice, please. All right. Okay. I rolled a four. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, we're so stealthy. Nether. Yeah. How, how did you roll? I rolled uh, on stealth. Uh, shoot, now I don't remember. I rolled. Somebody tell me what I rolled. I said it in the chat. All I remember is someone's using my 18. Rolled a, I have a f- plus five. 
12. I rolled a, I have a 12. That's what I rolled. So Prion's got... Oh, interesting. <laughs> well, it would have been a 9 or a 10. But yeah, I rolled against Yeah. Him. Yeah. I should have used my inspo. Damn it. All right. Um, so, <laughs> as you guys approach, it helps to have the visual aspect blocked by um uh the um darkness. familiar's darkness but as the three of you approach and kind of get towards what looks to be not a full ship but actually more like a large jolly boat maybe a it's a single masted vessel not suited for very long ocean travel Something just a slight bit larger than what you would have used, um, like the jolly boat you would have used to go up and down the coast. That is the only vessel that is situated at the dock. And though you do see it is outfitted, it looks like it's been um, loaded um, loaded up with supplies, or at least some. And are you saying, remind me, did the, the mother have lots of um she was packed she had lots of yeah. luggage mm -hmm. packed yeah she's actually packed like preparing for a trip bags are packed she's ready to go stop <laughs> never <laughs> write a poem um that's all trouble what to do <laughs> um children go And they go there to grow up. And adults Maybe go there it's a place to protect them. They're taking the children away so that they're not sacrificed, but they have to sacrifice one. And as you th are thinking this, you hear dum, 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 a thought uh, or a um, some heavy steps kind of coming towards the boat. Um. And you hear just from the under the water, someone there? You know, the sound. Someone calling out from the docks. And then you see a bright torch kind of shining. As someone's leaning over the side of the dock and looking around. What is, what's going on here? I think we've been spotted, friends. Can we go any deeper in the water? Is that possible? Swim down? Sure. Yeah. You guys so swim down, deeper. and as we do, oh, that old doll boat puts away the darkness. Anyway. Hey, Talon! I saw something weird out here. And you hear some other voices closer onto the house and a couple other people come out and you as you swim down you are not able to hear the conversation anymore but just sort of bits and pieces of speech as they're talking and you can clearly see the guy pointing down towards the water indicating that he saw something very odd my seagull will be up there still okay You are familiar then will re <clears throat> report to you that he heard them talking about. I just saw a giant piece of blackness. It was like pitch black as night, like a, and then it just sunk down into the water. Um, here's what Talon's reaction is to that. And he's go, just stay here, keep watching. We'll finish loading and go early. Still haven't heard from Kaylin. I'll fetch the rest. Just go. We need to go soon. Mm. And he walks black back up to the um house and the one guard just stays then at the end of the dock, just kinda looking at the boat, looking down at the water. Well, I've got one spell left I can cast. I can create a diversion with 
shape water. I have several options that I can do. That's why it's one of my favorites. I still, I wish we understood what was going on here. He's not willing to tell us. Well, we haven't tried everything yet. Prion, how long can your bird hang out around here? As long as he wants. Because he won't tell us, but there's nothing stopping, you know, your bird, who just looks like a regular bird. It could overhear him talking to his wife or one of the workers. True. I will relay the information and get him to go and listen in on him and his wife. Okay. <laughs> so, have your goal make a perception check. Oh. Good luck, goal. What is uh? Is it off an owl? Are we using an owl <sighs> template? Because an owl gets advantage, so it wouldn't be an owl. Um, for a goal. There wasn't no stat block. How would you a raven, maybe? A raven? D says we were using an owl last time. Yeah, I know we've been using an owl, but obviously owls get, like, night vision, and I don't think a seagull would. We might have to come up with that later. Yeah. But just do a straight check with it, yeah. Uh, straight check. I uh, rolled a 12. 12 on the dice, so whatever extras you will hear a couple quick snippets one is something strange happening go early um almost loaded wake elsie i relay the information So that would have been a fifteen on perception. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, that's what you that's what you hear. What and do do? as the as the um as the sound starts to dissipate, your gull kind of floats down. You can there are no open windows to perch in, and the, so it's it's mostly just having to catch the conversation as they were going along the porch and then into the home and right after they shut the door that it was listening. So perched on top of the, um, just very on the, the sort of the crown of the, the roof. Yeah. What do we do about this boat? We can sabotage it. Give us more time to figure out what's going on. That might be our best bet. This Me and Talese could easily sink it. Mm. That's like the only sabotage I know how to do on a boat this small is sink it. Mm. And they probably have other boats that they could use. Do they? This is the one... So this one's clearly being loaded up. Um, Talese is right. You would not be able to cut a rope to the rudder, but it still has a rudder like a steerer. Um, a tiller, I guess you would call it. Um, so there are still ways to sabotage the pivot mechanism or whatever for that. What if we were to steal the boat? <laughs> I'll leave that to you. We could just sink it. It's a lot of supplies. I mean, it was like stealing and sinking. It's the same end result where if they have they might have another boat of similar size. So yeah, they lose the supplies, but they could still go. Well, it's not about stopping them from going. It's about delaying them from going. Okay. Figuring out whether or not they're good people. That's the problem. I mean, we could always just confront them again. 
say no. we've been, we have your we have your daughter uh, we've been <laughs> we've been speaking with your daughter she's told us a great deal about rituals we've put some things together now's your chance to come clean if you want if not then we're going to be doing some exposing i mean that's yeah. that's pretty intense yeah and that's why stopping the boat or at least giving it giving them making them have to do something something else give us some more time time for to least uh not to least time for Serene to have her armor time for our companions to recover from their drunken stupor yeah okay sink I'm, it i'm not i'm not a big fan of it but i can't come up with anything better so sink the boat we could sink it and maybe take some of the supplies for ourselves i'm thinking if we sink it they're gonna have to, have to spend time recovering the supplies maybe that's your delay recovering the boat recovering the supplies delay. it's a delay that's all i still think we should take some of the supplies for ourselves and then it'll take them even longer to resupply because they can't recover what we've well, if the supplies are in the boat, the boat's at the bottom of the water, then they don't have those supplies. Okay. Um, obviously, with the stuff that they're putting, aren't they putting like crates, wooden crates and stuff like that? I'm sure, oh, I don't know what they're putting, but... Maybe, no, like, it's not quite that things. large of a ship. And so the supplies they're putting on there are quite meager. You see like two bags, like travel bags, um, another bag of food and some such, but not much it's not like they're loading up for an ocean expedition it seems like a very small amount of things that they're like on. Like idea. They're, es they're escaping like for a picnic yeah i have another idea another hmm. why don't you use your invisibility trick and go and have a look at what's in those supplies hmm. i don't Oh, I can, of course. I feel like this is this is not what we are expecting. This is they're not going out to an island. They're they're getting no. away. But maybe or, that's not what we're thinking is in those supplies. We're thinking it's food. Maybe we might find something that's not meant to be there. I don't know. I'm just throwing ideas. Well, I they could that. be crooks. They could be completely innocent. And just wanted to save their daughter who knows but if they were completely innocent and wanted to save their daughter why is there not a search party out her for her she's an adult mm. her, that she's run off before she's an adult who was last seen by the docks of the water would that not scare her parents not immediately if it's not out especially of if it's something she's done before hmm. all right i'll go look Yay. all right um are you using doll for this yes all right i will i will need another stealth check from sure. him sure can i create a distraction with uh with my he's sheet? already invisible so advantage yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, the guard is already a little distracted looking down at the water. Okie dokie. Pretty high Roll on stuff. It. A plus eight. Wow. So a total of 16. Not great, not terrible. 35 Rumpkin. Um, and um, Doll is able to sort of. What a horrible reference. I know. <laughs> It's oh so god good, though. Huh. I'm hoping we were just best, gonna let that one go best thing i've ever seen on television yeah, it opens the the bags a little bit and looks around and it looks like clothing and with that uh make a investigation check beyond that so this, this is gonna be on my investigation right um you are uh, you actually I could can I can see completely through his Yeah, you don't have to use an action to do it. Right. Um cause of reasons. Gotcha. Yes, that's fine. All right. Although I think he might actually have a better No, it's the same. Okay. 
Investigation. Plus two. We're gonna go with... Does it come? There it goes. It'll come. It'll so come. that's a four. Uh, close. There's clothes in there. Okay. Hmm. So as dolls are And I around, say that because a normal human opening up bags, it would be fine. But a tiny little creature exactly. opening corners and peering in and pulling out a tiny piece of cloth, you can't tell how large they are, who they're for. It's just, it's beyond, with a four, it's beyond the abilities of that. It's it, it, That would be a no role for a normal human rummaging through a bag. I just want to make that clear. So know? as Doll is coming back, she can come over and he's going to do um, the touch on uh, this fellow who's looking down in the water. Oh. A touch, you said. I did. To what? And what is this for? This is for um, heart, I heart sight. sight. I've rolled a five. Well, then I know his uh, current emotional state and also, um, I hate this, but his alignment. Um, Suspicious, lawful evil. Lawful evil. Lawful evil. How do you feel about human sacrifice? <laughs> Says Doll. Right next what? to <clears throat> Kind of we the guy wheels around and starts, you know, holding the torch around. The uh, comes around to the other side of the ear. Human sacrifice. Children. Given to the Dark One. What's the your dark personal one? take? <sighs> Who are you, creature? I Just serve something f- older and more powerful than you. Oh, and what's that? <sighs> it is oldest. It is deepest. Does it scare you? <sighs> it should scare you. Who are you? What is this trick? And I, as I'm doing that, I look at to um, Teresa. Uh, Nether looks to Teresa. Uh, not Teresa. Teresa says, "Sink it." Send away. I can't hear you, Teresa. I got too excited, <laughs> and I totally leaned away from the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> don't do it but I, I want to sink it and I have so many options to sink it or we could just use shape water <laughs> both of us could yeah. just go literally just a wave of water just literally into the boat and sink it that way that's what I was I was like um can I okay I would like to cast shape water and turn it into giant tentacles that surround the boat and like start pulling at it so this is about this boat is probably 10 foot wide by 30 foot long okay Okay, well we start filling it with water then and as and as they do that that doll pulls out the the darkness the darkness shell and you hear screams erupting from this person and calling Talon! Talon! I will wake up! And that's probably where we are going to end for the (laughs) night as you try to swamp the boat.